So <clears throat> what happens is two players simultaneously and independently choose uh, H, I, and G, I. All right, so player one selects G1, H1, and player two selects G2, H2. So four things to choose, but how many strategies they have? Infinitely many, because G, I can be anything in between zero, five, and H, I can be anything in between zero and infinite. So I is one, two, all right? Well, then the payoffs, all right? So the, I, I told you the payoffs are horrible. Uh, so the payoff of player R, uh, one, let me write that one, uh, G1, H1, uh, G2, H2. And it's this uh, functional form. Maximum of two things. Uh, zero, comma, 2H1 minus H2. It's multiplied by 10 minus G1 minus G2 plus... 6g1 uh, minus g1 square um, and then minus 2h1 square okay and then the payoff of the second player i'm not going to write it but if if you look at it it's sort of the similar utility function the payoff function uh, whenever you see g1 just uh, change it with g2 and whenever you see h1 change it with h2 so you're gonna get exactly the payoff of the second player uh, by the way if the rules of the games are symmetric i mean the same for each player if the strategy sets are the same for each player and then if the payoff functions are symmetric in the sense that as i said just change the names of player one's strategies with the player two strategy, meaning whenever you see G1, H1, just change them as G2, H2. And therefore, obviously, whenever you see G2, H2, change them with G1, H1, all right? And so if you do this uh, you know, transformation and get the second player's payoff, well, then that means this game is a symmetric game. Uh, I talk about symmetricity in probably this week's videos, so you probably haven't heard of this yet. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember each video, to be honest. Uh, but the symmetricity is going to come up later again and again. And well, why I sort of mentioned this? Well, because if the game is symmetric, that means the analysis of the game for one player is going to be identical to the analysis of this game for the second player. Which means you just need to analyze the equilibrium or you know the game for one player's from one player's perspective because the analysis will be identical. I mean, identical means the symmetric for the second player. So you don't really have to do the same thing again and again because it's going to be just repetition. All right. So if the game is symmetric once again, uh, just focus on one player. And you can basically conclude that the analysis for the second player is going to be the same. Right? So that basically uh, saves a lot of time. So this is a symmetric game. Um, so the question is asking, you know, a bunch of questions. Uh, what are they? The first one, show that the strategy, show the strategy uh, GI, HI equals zero, zero is a dominated strategy, is dominated for each i, okay? Uh, so once again, I'm going to do it for player one only, but because uh, if you do the same thing for player two, it's you'll see it's the same. But by the way, as an exercise, I think you should do for the second player's analysis at home just to sort of see or sort of validate uh, what I'm saying, all right? Validate that the conclusion is going to be the same. All right, so let's look at uh, player one. What I want to show that G1, H1, selecting 0, 0, is dominated. Good. Well, if you want to prove something like this, well, first, what is the strategy that's going to dominate 0, 0, right? Uh, I need to find that strategy. Well, uh, 
The thing is, what if that strategy, that dominating strategy is, is a mixed strategy, as in the previous example? Well, in a question like this, if, if the dominated, dominating strategy is, is, is in mixed strategies, well, uh, it, it's technically very, very difficult for this level of the uh, course. So that means there should be some pure strategy, all right? I mean, trust me, this is, this is not a grad course. So that means there should be some pure strategy dominating zero, zero. What is it? Well, I don't know at this point. Maybe it's, for example, one, zero. Maybe it's five, five. Maybe it's, I don't know. Remember, GI cannot be more than five. Maybe it's 400, but something uh, different than zero, zero. So one, zero is different than zero, zero, okay? Because this is a, a different strategy. Okay, so how do I find this? Well. To figure this out, meaning to figure out the dominated, dominating strategy, if a strategy is dominated, I, I mean, it's something I like about English, that means there is a strategy dominating, right? You put the ing. So dominated is the one that is being dominated, and the dominating is the one that dominates. All right, so, so if, if a strategy is dominated, there should be a strategy that is dominating it, okay? So you don't really need to make a new definition. It's just, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the verb domination or dominating is, is, I mean, it requires that, you know, something dominating other. Okay, so here uh, I need to look at the payoff function closely, all right? So here, when I look at this function, so there are two terms, basically. The first term, which doesn't look nice because it says, I'm gonna multiply something, 10 minus G1 minus G2, uh, with another term. And this term is, by the way, either zero or this 2H1 minus H2, but this 2H1 minus H2 should be uh, non-negative, right? I mean, if it is negative, then this max thing is zero. If it is positive, well, then this max thing is going to be equal to 2H1 minus H2. Okay, so let's suppose, right? Uh, let's suppose this 2H1 minus H2 guy is less than or equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, this max thing is still zero, right? If it is strictly less than, well, that's still zero. So if this is zero, well, then I'm going to multiply 10 minus G1 minus G2 term with zero. So basically my payoff function is going to be very simple, in fact. So I'm, I'm not going to write this uh, entire bracket. Uh, but my payoff is going to be 6G1 minus G1 square minus 2H1 square. All right. Okay. Uh, what do I learn out of this? Any guess? Just look at the payoff. What I can observe, first of all, <clears throat> U1 uh, does not depend on G2 and H2. Would you agree? Again, suppose that this is true, all right? So be careful. I mean, I need to make the analysis for the case where this is greater than zero. So that analysis will be probably completely different. But in this case, when this 2H1 minus H2 thing is less than or equal to zero, this is the payoff function of the first player. And there is no term including G2 and H2. So H2. So that means the second player's strategy is irrelevant for the first player. All right. So what does that mean? That means remember that strict dominance basically means whatever the other guys do, you know, uh, there's a strategy giving me higher payoff than zero, zero. So here, whatever the other guys do uh, is, is irrelevant anyway, okay? So that's a good thing. So here, if I choose zero, zero, what is the payoff? Well, G1, zero, right? This is G1, this is H1. So both terms are zero, so the utility is zero. Good. Question is, can I find some other G1, H1 where this guy, this payoff, is greater than zero? I mean, is it, is it possible? I mean, is there any G1, H1 
uh, such that this guy is greater than zero. Uh, any g1, h1 different than zero, zero. Well, first, again, look at the, you know, this is the term with g1, this is the term with h1. So, you know what, if you want to make this guy pos uh, positive, all right, strictly greater than zero, first of all, you better choose h1 as zero, because the higher h1 you're going to pick, this term is going to be more and more negative, or, you know, smaller and smaller. I shouldn't say more negative, but it's going to be smaller. But I want to make things higher than zero. So I, I don't want to th make things smaller. I want to make this guy bigger. So that means you have to choose h1 zero. So because I am looking for a better strategy, that h1 equals zero is probably going to give me a better strategy. If this is the case, what is the g1 that I should be picking? Well, here, don't forget, the dominant strategy doesn't uh, requires finding the best strategy. All I have to do is to find just one better strategy, all right? So what does that mean? That means, so if g1 is zero, well, this term is zero, question is, can I find some g1 in between zero and one where that term is not going to be zero? For example, if g1 is one, right? Start with one. What is this term? Well, this term, if g1 is one, well then, and h1 is zero, then the u1 guy is equal to six minus one square, meaning one, minus zero. So it's basically six minus one, which is five, which is strictly higher than zero. You see what I mean? Hmm. So that means if this two h1 minus h2 guy is less than or equal to zero, well then I found another strategy, g1 equals one, h1 equals zero, which is going to give the first player strictly higher payoff. Question is, does this strategy give again higher payoff, higher than zero, when this inequality doesn't hold, right? This is the second case. <clears throat> so what if... Um, 2h1 minus h2 positive. All right, let's first think about this inequality. It means 2h1 greater than h2. Okay. Um, well, you know what? My second strategy, uh, the, the better strategy, the dominating strategy, The candidate, I mean, it's candidate. I'm not sure yet if it is a dominating strategy, but a, a, a candidate dominating strategy is this one. H10, G11. So that means this two times H1 is in fact zero. And then I am looking for, in the second case, H2s that are less than zero. Is it possible? No, it's not possible. So what does that mean? Hmm. Basically, I don't know if you can see it, but my analysis is over. And in fact, I just found, I realized that I found a strategy, uh, which is G11, H10, that strictly dominates 0, 0 strategy for player 1. How can be sure about it? Well, why the second step sort of took, you know, just, you know, under, a, 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 you know, 30 seconds? Well, because... When h1 is equal to zero, I realize that this 2h1 minus h2 greater than zero will never be true. Because I know that the second player will always choose zero or some positive, strictly positive number. All right. So for that reason, there's only one case that I need to look again for h1 equals zero, and it's this case. And in this case, I already know that G1 equals 1, H1 equals 0, uh, strictly dominates 0, 0. So uh, that means this strategy strictly dominates 0, 0 for player 1. Well, the question is, is this strategy going to dominate uh, player 2's payoff? I'm sorry, player 2's strategy 0, 0? Yes, 
Again, do this analysis for the second player. I mean, calculate the payoffs and see if it gives higher payoff for the second player as well. But once again, because the payoffs are symmetric, because the game is symmetric, I can still say uh, G2 equals one, uh, H1, I'm sorry, H2 equals zero, also strictly dominates, uh, strictly dominates zero, zero. Okay. Well, one question, for example, G1 equals two, H1 equals zero, does it dominate uh, zero, zero? Well, maybe, I mean, uh, maybe I didn't check that. Maybe yes, maybe not, I don't know, but it's easy to check. How so? Well, when H1 is zero, G1 is equal to two, so it's basically six times two, 12, uh, minus G1 square four, so th this total is going to be eight strictly higher than zero. So you know what, G1 equals two is also, and H1 is equal to zero is also strictly dominating. Well, you may ask, can I find another strategy dominating zero, zero, but H1 is uh, greater than zero? There may be, all right? You have to check that. Uh, but the, the thing is, the question is asking, show that the zero, zero strategy is dominated. It doesn't ask me to find all the other strategies that dominate zero, zero. All right, so therefore, all I have to do is to just find one strategy, all right, that's better than zero, zero, regardless of what the other guys do, all right? And this is exactly what I did. Any question?